Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and a turkey day. Welcome to all of you joining us here on Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, here on Tulsa CW1219 and in the Muskogee Media Newsroom as we bring you this week's holiday edition of the show. So excited to have you all with us, and I know a lot of people this time of year, especially our Native families, are all gathered up uh, at a loved one's house, something like that, getting, uh, getting all the turkey dressing and the trimmings and uh, and uh, we know that uh, it's going to be a day of food football and hopefully native news today so thanks for joining in with us here and uh, we're going to have 30 minutes for you of some great content we are loaded up today with stories we got lots of things i believe six in all so we're going to have six features for you here today um, a little bit of everything you know it's going to be a real eclectic show we're going to have everything uh, from American Idol auditions to a citizen of the Muscogee Creek Nation that is a cheerleader at the University of Oklahoma. I bet you didn't know that. So um, those are the kind of things that you get when you tune into Native News today. I, I really love making the audience go, hey, I didn't know that. You know, and that's sort of what we strive to do around here. We want to make sure that not only are you getting news, the information that you need, but you're finding things out about your people, your culture, your heritage. Um, and if it, you're non-native, you're finding things out about the Muscogee Creek people. Uh, we're not what you think we are from the textbooks or the encyclopedias or anything like that. Uh, a living people that are thriving uh, in a modern time and are doing great things. There's all kinds of things happening, exciting things happening for us. Uh, big cases to look at right now for us on the news side of things. Also, our features just continue to come in and we are amazed by some of the things the Muscogee Creek people are doing out there. I want to remind you all too that if you want to stay with us for sh you want to stay with us for sure but um, if, if, if you'll do yourselves a favor uh, follow us on our online channel we continue to get subscribers we continue to grow our popularity on that channel we see that you're watching the videos we see the numbers we know that it is a not only uh, a resource and an asset for a lot of you but it's really a big boon for us here at uh, Muskogee Media to be able to connect with you in such a way and see who's watching us. You know, we're getting a real-time response from the people that we're connecting with. And uh, we really feel like with a lot of the things we have planned for the future, uh, it's gonna go hand in hand with providing the best possible product for our Muskogee Creek citizens. And as I said, non-citizens out there uh, that really have an interest in what we're doing. Stay with us and buckle up. As I said, we've got lots of stories to get to. We're going to take our first break right now, and we'll be right back with Native News Today. Muskogee Media has created an online survey to get feedback from you about our coverage and operations. Participants will be entered to win artwork from Muskogee Creek artist Dana Tiger. At the beginning, you will be asked for your name, phone number, and email. The survey consists of 18 questions that are either multiple choice or in a yes or no format. Visit www.muskogeemedia.com to participate before November 30th, and winners will be announced December 1st. Welcome back to the show. Put those forks down for just a moment. Uh, put down the uh, cranberry sauce, and uh, we've got a story for you here. Coming from the Muscogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program, a program that not only have other tribes modeled their programs now after, but also a program that has went around the country, 
Harvard University, out to California, and told the story of what they've done here at Muskogee Creek Nation, building a transitional living facility from a grant they received from the federal government. You know, you look out there and, and, and it, what they've built is a place they can call their own, but also a place of second chances. And that's what the reintegration program is all about. And not only do they do that, they look for a way to help out the nation and those folks living in the transitional living facility. And that birthed the idea for the Muskogee Creek Nation Reintegration Work Crew. And I followed them around for a day and followed this story. We kind of looked at, uh, we knew we were going to have people staying here, clients living on campus. What could we do? What, what could we you know, possibly come up with for them? And, our, and our, one of our thoughts was, is that we could establish a work crew. With this work crew, we basically tackle a lot of the jobs that um, the Creek Nation may fall through the cracks a lot, where an elder or somebody that, that has a disability or a veteran can't, can't get to their lawn or, or you know, they need a disability ramp built or things of that nature. I know that there's a lot of calls, Creek Nation's flooded with a lot of calls all the time, and so we get them a lot and we just thought, hey, what better way to give back? I have checked around on resources that could help me with this backyard and it got away from me. I'm don't like to use that part, but I'm a cancer patient, survivor, can't get scratched up too much. But I heard it through at one of our community meetings, one of our council reps told us about the reintegration. Actually, we had a uh, representative uh, from reintegration that came that could do these services. So I tapped into it and, and they came and everything fell into place. So I'm really grateful. We'll schedule a day and time for our guys to go out. Uh, then when that day comes, you know, I'll, I'll get with Caleb, who's our, our foreman and let him know what, kind of what we got for the day, um, let him know where they're going to go and what they're going to be doing, and, and uh, he'll kind of relay that information to the rest of the crew. Um, and I'll go out and check on them. You know, I've actually went out a couple times with them and done some work. We were shorthanded a couple days and went out and got on a mower and did some mowing with them and stuff. And, and, uh, but I have a lot of, lot of interaction with the, the, the person that we're helping. We did a lot of projects around the city. Um, we, we painted parking lines around the city, we painted the rodeo grounds, um, we painted City Hall. Um, so just some different things that, that we've done over the years. And then once we started looking at that and how much we've given back in itself, and we have a donation store that we have that clients volunteer and work at, and then we looked at it and said, hey, why can't we just do it full time? Uh, all our clients are employed through employment and training, and they go out uh, and they, we, we take calls for these jobs and then they go and, and they and they perform the perform the jobs and so uh, it's been it's been really great for us and it's really a way to give back um, a lot of positive feedback and our, our clients have are really really enjoyed it and it gives them something to look forward to Monday through Friday eight to five they get up every day they go to work um, and it's been beneficial for everybody that that's one of the biggest barriers that we face is employment and so by them having this and just being able to go to these jobs and being able to being out there and get back out there in the working world for, for them um, is, is, is everything. All right, we want to thank the reintegration work crew for letting us tag along with them for a day there, Mr. Uh, Ken Tarioli, uh, uh, having us over to his front yard, uh, or backyard, I should say, uh, and being willing to talk about his, uh, how pleased he was with uh, the work that they did and, and that this was a program that not a lot of people think about whenever, and that's what we talked about in the story. Sometimes the Muskogee Creek Nation has these gaps to fill. It's nice to have a program like that uh, where we can help out uh, several on several different fronts. So I want to thank them for that story. Uh, we want to move right along to our next story here. One of the most exciting times for kids around the area that bust into our big events are our cultural days at Muskogee Creek Nation. Now, we sent Kevin Barnett out. Uh, he's one of our newer guys, and he uh, went out for sort of a man-on-the-street type of story and filed this from the cultural day here on the Muskogee Creek Nation Capitol grounds as all the kids came in and learned about all things Muskogee. We're going to 
eventually lose it if we just don't continue to teach the language, the songs, the culture, stickball games, things like that that we're trying to put forth uh, through this cultural event. I love to educate children, to educate them as to how things were made and how things, how the, the, that the natives lived, say, even back in the 1800s, how hard it was to make things, how intelligent they were to be able to figure out like the basket patterns and the counts and the weaves. Today I've made sapunipki and I've made red beans with sweet corn. Now I know it's not a full full day event, but at least I get a idea of maybe the way that the way that some of the foods that we used to eat, some of the the stickball games, the the dances that we used to do years ago. These traditions came from Alabama and Georgia when our ancestors came on the Trail of Tears. I brought my son because I want him to learn, you know, where he comes from, so that way, one day when he has kids, he'll be able to pass it down to his own and keep it going. If we don't have our children to learn the culture and carry it on, we're going to be too lazy. This game, it, it was just really fun. I, I liked all of them. I liked when everybody just started running after the ball. Some boys tried to catch it and they started throwing it. It, it was just really cool. You know, there's a lot of people out there like myself, and if you watch the, the uh, live stream of the election, you know that I'm a big college football fan. I know a lot of you are probably watching college football today after you're watching Native News today. But it's a great spectacle. The fans, the big uh, stadiums, arenas, uh, you got all the people, uh, the mascots, the players, uh, just everything that goes into the presentation. And down on the sidelines, You've got the cheerleaders. You know, cheerleaders and football, it's, it's hand in hand, always has been. Now, at the University of Oklahoma, these cheerleaders are cheering in front of, at every home game, 86,000 plus people. What an incredible thing to be able to get that many people on their feet, clapping their hands for their team. And one of the University of Oklahoma cheerleaders is Miss Mackenzie Matre. She is a Muscogee Creek citizen, and she is so excited to be a true freshman on the, uh, the University of Oklahoma all-girl cheer squad. I started about like seven years ago in my high school and just from that like I just started loving it and doing more and more and more and here I am today. I've been to NCAA Nationals three times. Um, my team hasn't done so well though. We went to Dallas and uh, went to NCAA. Uh, my team also, my high school team, we went to state uh, three years and we placed in the top five all those three years. It's been the most incredible experience like Cheering in front of like 90,000 people, like it's like mind blowing how amazing it is to be there in front of all those people and they're all looking at you. I plan to get my degree in interior design and move to a large city and work at an architecture firm um, and just continue my love of architecture. I think it's really unique to have, um, to be a citizen of Creek Nation. It sets me apart because there's not very many of us, even on OU's campus, and even though we're part of Oklahoma, that there's still very few of us, and I think it's really neat to be a part of that. My name is Mackenzie Matre, and I'm from Blanchard, Oklahoma, and I'm a citizen of the Muscogee Creek Nation. You know, the month of November t uh, brings us a lot of things, Native American Heritage Month, uh, Thanksgiving, of course, but just last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, Veterans Day, something that is very, very important to not only myself, uh, but, but all of us here at Muskogee Media, uh, that we honor our veterans. You know, it's been said before, uh, and I don't care, I'll say it every chance I get, that the Muskogee uh, veterans are one of our greatest assets, one of our greatest treasures here at the tribe, but it's been said before that the American Indian race per capita has sent more uh, of its people to uh, service uh, for the United States military and this uh, week we are honoring 
a Muskogee Creek veteran that was killed in action uh, by sharing the story of Michael Hope, who was killed in Vietnam but was given recently um, an unbelievable honor with the facility being named after him in his honor. Well, his time over in Vietnam was was the fact that he was always pursuing, you know, doing reconnaissance and so forth. And uh, what we understand that uh, he had already uh, done his tour and they were short of those type of pilots. So he re-upped on that and that uh, he did another six months of it. And then he re-upped again to help him because uh, and then at about that time is when he got shot on his, on his third tour. Man, that's uh, one of those things you search and you would love him to be here, but what he was doing was for his country and, and he loved doing that. And for me to sit back and, and I can't be nothing but just proud Oh, it's just been so much. It's been great. Something that he's really needed over the years, you know. It, and I just can't thank Dale City enough for doing what they've done. Well, about like, you know, I, I, I want just anyone, someone walking down the street to know that, uh, you know, he, he wasn't doing it for the glory. It wasn't that at all. It was that he had a good camaraderie with his friends and his brothers that were fighting in the war. You know, he wanted to do everybody proud. And I think that's what I would love for everybody to know that he was a proud person and he loved his country, loved his family, loved his mates. Basically, being so young and him much older than we were, not having the time that we wanted with him, but uh, we spent a lot of time with her. And so I have to believe that, you know, she was just, he was so much like her. And <clears throat> she loved to laugh. My aunt loved to laugh, so I have to believe that Michael was the same way. We were, we were waiting and counting the days that, you know, he was supposed to come home. And we were looking forward to that. And the, um, my dad being a barber, we were in, and we didn't have a phone at home at that time, but it just so happened it was after work that dad got the phone call. It was around 5.30 or so. And we were getting ready to leave the barber shop. And uh, anyway, uh, he had gotten the phone call and said he was missing in action. Well, we always thought that phone call was saying he's on his way home, but instead it was reversed, that uh, he was missing in action. And I'll, I'll never forget my dad uh, sitting back in the barber chair, and uh, he said that, man, those pilots, they know how to get out of stuff, so maybe he got out. And then it was a few days later, or a week or so later, that we found that he was killed and, and he was not, no longer missing. But we still look for the day to bring him home. And, uh, and then the funeral, of course. I remember a lot of that. And, and a lot of the friends or family members that came up for, at her house before we went to the church were the services and but it was it was great it was great he would have been honored that way
And we want to thank uh, the, the Hope family there for sharing that story with us and, and everything that goes into it and, uh, and keeping his memory alive as we know that that facility will do as we honor him along with the naming of that facility there. Moving right along, as I said earlier, we have a new uh, new person here at Muskogee Media that's been kind of going out and getting out amongst the people, checking out the sites, and, and really just kind of man on the street. We love these videos he's putting together because it kind of puts him out there uh, amongst the crowd. Uh, he can walk around, such as with Cultural Day, but he heard that American Idol tryouts were coming to uh, downtown Tulsa. So he thought to himself, you know, there will probably be a lot of Native American citizens uh, of different tribes out there, all walks of life, trying out for American Idol. So, hey, take a camera, see what we can find. Walking around the Guthrie Green, American Idol tryouts. This is Kevin Barnett's story. Oklahoma's always been very good to us, talent-wise. Carrie Underwood, born and raised here. Um, so with that legacy, you know, I think a lot of these people come out and they are in the position to be that next American Idol. I want them to forget everything that they're going through for that short moment and just enjoy my music. In terms of standing out, I think the greatest thing is going to be authenticity. Um, you know, to be who you are at, at your core. He calls her up on the phone again But everyone knows she's ignoring him my name is Martin Solorzano. I live in Mulgee, Oklahoma. Uh, this is a Creek Nation capital of the world. If I win, uh, man, I don't know. The real question would be like, I don't know if I really want to win. I would like to get up there so like I could like maybe get up there and then like then X me out so I could get. <laughs> I see those people seem to do better than like the winners. You spend more than you own. I want to see, you know, what your voice is, who you are as an artist. I want that creativity to flow through somebody, um, and you kind of know it when you see it. And our last feature of the week and our last feature of this Gobble Gobble Thanksgiving edition of Native News Today is one of our biggest probably our single biggest event of the year at Muskogee Creek Nation, other than the festival. A lot goes into the festival, of course, but a meaningful event, I would say, to such a deep-rooted uh, cultural interest for the tribe is the Council Oak Ceremony. Now, a lot of people out there don't know what I'm talking about when I say Council Oak. In Tulsa, downtown Tulsa, uh, right next to the big famous apartment buildings that go straight up, uh, you will find the Council Oak and the Council Oak Park. That Council Oak is where the Lojaboga people, uh, the turtle people of the Muskogee Creek Nation, and basically uh, from the start put down their roots in the Tulsa area and began Tulsi Town, which is now Tulsa. And the Council Oak ceremony marks that every year. is where we staked our claim and made our, our home. Nearly the entire city was Muskogee territory. This oak tree over here to my left served as a historic landmark in our history. It is a visible reminder today of our journey. Gracious God, our Creator, you have saw fit for us to see this day that our elders told us that it was never promised to us, but for some reason we stand here before each other we stand here enjoying the gift of life and we say thank you for this moment. 
in, in more ways than we realize, this is significant in our lives as contemporary Muskogee people. Kind of brings an understanding to why this day is so important for us, why this moment is crucial in the life of our people, because the entire city of Tulsa was established out of this moment. So uh, really, if, it, if we can't rely on the, the you know the state to tell our, our kids about this, we ha we have to do it. You know, it, it, it falls on us. And that will wrap us up for this week's episode of Native News Today. I want to say again a very happy Thanksgiving holiday to all the people out there. Um, and we're celebrating. I, you know, I, I love the old uh, I, you know, people ask me, you know, they go, Jason, you know, you're Native American. Do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? I said, we did once. No, I'm just, uh, it was uh, <laughs> great fun that first time, and then things kind of, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we, 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 we celebrate Thanksgiving by uh, honoring the fact that even though uh, from contact to, you know, the several years following, things weren't so hot for the Native Americans, uh, now we showcase ourselves as survivors and having come to a place uh, from long ago through different struggles, removal, uh, statehood, all kinds of things that happened in the, in the history. Uh, and, and now to be thriving, to having our governments not only working with the state, but being looked at as uh, you know, valuable partners by all that they work with in the communities and the state of Oklahoma and the surrounding areas. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful story of survival. And, and Thanksgiving is a perfect, I think, indication of that because you take something that, you know, as I said, contact to those years that followed, now it's a positive. And, and we all celebrate together as families because we're still here, we're still thriving, and very much a part of uh, what makes this great country uh, so great is that there's, you know, diversity. And there's people here that you can learn from. There's people here that have a beautiful culture, not of your own, but that you can learn from and be educated on. And that's what we do each and every week here on the program. So I'll jump off my soapbox and go to my other soapbox, which is always to remind you folks out there that we are trying to connect with you online. We want you to go to our YouTube online channel, search Muskogee Media, search Native News Today. Uh, we'll take you to our channel. Subscribe, hit that red button. Be, get on the train now. You know, people, whenever we blow up and there's tens of thousands of followers, you're going to be, want to be in that first, you know, couple thousand. You're going to be, want to stake your claim to being one of the originators that got in before it just became the fad. So it's a great thing for you to go on there now. You'll get everything on demand, as I said. As we upload it, you'll get a notification. You can watch it right then. You don't have to wait till Saturday. And that's one of the great things and great perks about our online channel. Also, Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, it's the holiday season, so we'll be having lots of giveaways, lots of things and interaction uh, at Muskogee Media that you can take part in, gift baskets, whatever. We do it all here at Muskogee Media. For Jared Moore and all of the great people here that make it happen on Native News Today, I'm Jason Salzman. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We'll see you next time. <music>